Alrighty, uh, welcome to the episode 19 of the Native Overstayer podcast and today we're joined by a multi-talented young lady, uh, not only a black firm, a rugby commentator, uh, the teenage tour program organiser, which I'm very proud of uh, to know her for, um, but also the most important role, uh, a mum and a wife, Vania Wolfgram. Thank you very much for coming to our uh, humble little podcast here, Vania, we really appreciate you coming on. No, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, that's a it's a bit of an intro, Pat, but uh, <laughs> no, good to be here. It's a it's a well deserved one, trust me. Well deserved one. Um, how's okay. the lockdown been for you and the the family, Rania? Oh, mate. Um, yeah, it's been. Um, hence why it's so late. It's been. Uh, they've been long days, you know, trying to juggle the home life, our, our family. Um, but but you know what? It has identified how. Um, how crucial or the quality of um, time with your family is really, really important. Eh? So it's been really cool having the family time. Um, but put it this way, it's an adventure every day when you have a two-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long were you a black fern for? And, and when did you, what was your period of time for playing for, for that team? Yeah. Um, so I made my debut in uh, 2003. Um, and... You know, luckily, for, I mean, I mean, back then it was very unusual or very rare to play your debut in New Zealand. Um, a lot of the games we played overseas, uh, you would hardly ever have um, home games. So, um, and it was an unusual event too. We actually, I was actually in the um, in the World 15, and we were playing against the Black Friends. Um, mm -hmm. And in that program, there was an injury in the Black Friends camp. So. Fortunate enough for me, um, I got the call up for the next game. But you know, it was from the opposition's side, so you know that's that's really um, quite ironic. And at the same time, my sister, me and my sister were in that same team, so I had played with my sister against the Black Ferns in the match against the Black Ferns at Eden Park, and then the second Test match was taken up to Whangarei, where I got called into that squad. And then ended up playing against my sister in that game. Um, didn't play um, as many test matches as I probably would have liked. Um, had a had an injury that forced me out of the game, um, and so I had a detached retina. So, but you know what though, um, sitting in behind um, Anna Richards and the like uh, for for some time um, probably gave me the best experiences and the learning experiences uh, to date. So, yeah, it's been been a, a journey and, and probably one like when you can look back and and now where women's rugby is at it's quite a, a pretty amazing quite pleasing to see the growth mm -hmm. did you play uh it's it's high school as well Vanya? Did you play? Yeah. it was it was kind of just coming into the high school scene so i only played in uh, my last year of school um, and I think, you know, um, I went to, I went to only hung a high and in, yeah. in those days we, um, um, our girls at that time, we played everything. So, you know, our touch team was our volleyball team was our, you know, yeah. So I didn't play at a young age. Um, not like, you know, now we're presenting more playing opportunities at a very, very young age, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and that's probably where we're seeing most of our growth in the women's game. Yeah. Now you and you and your sister Justine made the Black Ferns, yeah? Yeah, correct. Um, actually, Justine made the Black Ferns the year after, and that was on a tour to Canada. So um, yeah, we both toured to Canada and we played against Canada, USA, and England. Mum and Dad, all right with you guys? Because it's 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 women's rugby, but it's still pretty full on, eh? Yeah. Were they happy um, with you guys so playing? That's funny, eh? Uh, because when I got to high school, it was out of the question. Like, not not just rugby, every sport. Mm. So, you know, for, for Pacifica girls, it's very common for girls not to be in the, in the sporting area, if that makes sense. Uh, it's not, you know, we don't belong in mainstream um, sport, according to our, our upbringings or our, our culturally. It's not... Um, yeah, so that was, uh, for me, being the oldest too, that was another layer of, uh, I suppose, um, navigating uh, our cultures. So um, there was a lot of, you know, I just wasn't allowed to play sport. And so it was quite funny when we started playing rugby, well, I, 
um, started playing rugby it was behind closed doors so you know often I would be saying to my parents oh I'm going to the library <laughs> no miss over here is going to train but it was the one sport that my dad wasn't um, that strict about as success sort of kicked in uh, you know our people um, yeah um, they started they started supporting, not that they didn't support us, you know, I think it was just trying to, they were doing the best that they could. It was, they were trying to protect us, you know, because if, mm. I felt like if we failed, then we would have failed them as parents. And that's not seen as uh, the right thing to do, you know, by our our standards. I think we, it was hard for them to see us travel, but at the same time, it was, they just couldn't believe we were going to all these places. And unfortunately, at that time, my parents couldn't come and see us mm. uh, debut, even in Whangarei. Um, and for my sister who debuted was in Canada, they weren't able to travel um, because they had other, you know, they had my brother as a youngster and also it just wasn't even, um, we couldn't even fathom everyone coming over to travel for us. And I, and I think if we look at how um, at that time things were paid, you know, we couldn't even believe we could get on a plane, mm-hmm. get gear. And it was being paid for us. So, uh, yeah, our parents were left very, very proud. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty awesome. It was, an, it was an awesome experience. Did you have a favourite place to tour or were you visited that you might not have visited yourself? Or? Vancouver was really pretty. It actually reminded me of uh, home, you know, yeah. very quite green and uh, scenic. So, uh, and that was, that was the first place that I travelled to um, rugby-wise. My latest tour, and, and as of late, it was it was uh, the very T-shirt that Patrick's actually wearing. Um, it's Tiki Samoa, yeah, yeah. So um, we didn't, unfortunately, we couldn't go this year. Um, but you know, it was um, I mean, proud of proud of them. It was the measles um, that happened then that kind of put that off. But the year before, so 2019 and 2018 were. Um, I suppose privileged enough to take uh, Auckland Samoa Women's Team to Samoa and it really to date has been one of the, my favourite tours um, mm. because of the fact that we were able to take um, anyone that wanted to play um, and try and run clinics over there and give back in the capacity that we could so yeah Samoa would be right up there. Just mm. uh, obviously when you were playing for the Black Ferns um, were you guys uh, paid to play? I mean, was it what sort of environment, what sort of professional environment was it for you guys back then? And then how has that sort of changed to now and what we have? Yeah. Um, we we were paid uh, for, for, for a kid. Like, so Justine would have been um, probably fresh out of school. Mm. Um, and then there was, I sort of, you know, a couple of years, I was still at uni. Um, money then, let's say, we were probably, um, it wasn't much. It wasn't much at all. Uh, for some of the older girls, it was probably enough to get a really good cup of coffee. <laughs> However, um, but you know, yeah, you, you see now that we've got, um, you know, girls are professionally contracted now um, in both the sevens and the fifteens games. So, shucks, it's just, and I, and I remember actually coming through, um, you know, playing and, and someone had said to me, we, it will never happen. Women's rugby will never go professional, and this is from um, you know someone who who uh, was a black fern, um, and w- we work in, in women's rugby now, so it's kind of very very still surreal, um, but we have really come a long way. Yeah. I think um, you guys have been at the forefront, really. I mean, you're like a, almost a trailblazer for the Pacific people. Were there many black ferns of Pacific? Uh, origin back before you came along, Brian? Um, there was actually, um, and I, I reckon uh, there was a good probably 50% of the Black Ferns then uh, were Pacifica, mm. Pacifica mm. Māori. Uh, so not really too much has changed if you look at, uh, you know, our profile of our Black Ferns, you know, they're, we're, we're very diverse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, uh, Justine and I, I think, we're the second set of sisters to play for the Black Ferns, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first Pacifica set of sisters, the first Samoan set of sisters. And, and since then, there's been the Itunu sisters. So oh, yeah. really awesome to see Linda and um, Aldora out there. So, um, yeah, no, um, yeah, the, the Pacifica makeup of our, um, of our Black Ferns has, yeah, very strong, 
comes through really strong and it's really cool to see that it's still the same today. I mean, we're, we're pretty much made for the sport, eh? Both in the male and female games, so. Some of us. <laughs> you are. You are, mate. Yeah. Finally, just with, um, with those teams that you played and just, what was, um, what was the culture like? I mean, obviously having a lot of Māori and Pacific Island, sorry, Pacific Island players. Mm. Um, I'm sure there was a few wires and a lot of sievers going on. Uh, tell us about that. Yep. Uh, so Tala Molipola, who was uh, uh, just before my time, but we played at the same club. She um, she probably introduced a couple of um, sievers and uh, which is still played today. So you know now the girls have put in um, a bit of a, a black friend songbook that they, you know you you can go in and the girls can pick up and. Um, so that was that was awesome. A um, number of the Waiatas are still in there now. So, yeah, the legacy is um, really, it's come a long way. Like, um, but it's, I think it's something that I'm really, really proud of as a, as a former Black Fern to see that that culture is still really, really strong and that you would never get anywhere else in the world. Vani, a lot of the, um, the guys we've spoken to in the past in, in regards to rugby, one of the things, including yourself there, Jack, uh, that you take from rugby is, is are the friendships that you build. And mm -hmm. I know that you've got a, a group of really tight uh, friends that, that you met through rugby. You, you call them the Bullies, is that right? Yeah. I don't know who named us. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we look like Bullies or laugh like Bullies. Um, but you're right. I think rugby is, um, yeah, that it really has enabled uh, some lifelong friendships um, and not just here in um, Aotearoa but even overseas so um, you know we've got uh, our type of our bobbies um, we have Moana now who um, resides in Melbourne Australia and um, Bella who's now in Hong Kong so and, and, and in between this whole time people have shifted overseas but that, um, that friendship still stays strong today um, but like like most sports say eh? I think that's that's the beauty of sport. It's um, being able to create those uh, relationships here and abroad. The difference, though, with, with, with your friendship and the bovies is that you have taken your friendship and expanded it out into our communities. I mean, you go along to any of your events, whether it was the Teenage Tour last year or, or the, um, <coughs> the, the Pacifica Aotearoa Cup, mm. you always see you and then you'll see all your, your bovie <laughs> Teenage Tours and you're with you, you know? Yeah, so that, that's a cool thing. Yeah, no, um, you're very right there, Pat. They're, um, they're a special bunch. So, um, you know, I think because our friendships were made in rugby, um, there's always that one thing that we always keep in the back of our mind is uh, being able to give back. And when we can, um, but give back in a real, uh, I suppose, um, meaningful way. Mm. Um, as you, you know, um, we, we grew up, very similar stories. Um, our parents are immigrants, you know, we didn't have much. And so when uh, rugby is taking us to some amazing places and um, it's only right for us to honour our parents and their journey and be able to, um, I suppose, try and um, not only give back to the girls who are coming through, but, um, you know, really, really really sell that story that that you can do whatever it is that you want to do whether it's rugby or you know another sport or 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 even in, in life um but you know i love that when we have an idea or that we're all in you know it doesn't matter what it is and so just going back off um what you said in around our the tenure tour program it really it was um we using rugby as the vehicle but um really trying to instill it's really simple way it's just the confidence in our girls um and really owning their heritage or knowing who they are owning their identity and being proud of that i think um when we live in a um in a world that anything can sway us it's really important that our girls um can see that and that they can we just instill um some values that they can believe in um culture is really for me it's really really important um, because in generation after generation we don't want to see our um, our culture sort of you know um, be watered down or you know what I mean so I think um, in honoring our parents it's really important to us. Funny, how did you um, sort of make that transition into to commentary and sort of life outside of rugby how did that all sort of come about? Um, 
that's it, honestly commentary wasn't something that uh, um, I don't feel was natural for me. Um, but but there weren't many there weren't many female commentators. Melody Robinson's uh, the legend herself, you know, the own the sole I suppose female uh, that has been around for a very long time. Um, she created uh, a program called uh, the Wonderful Group. Now that really is. Um, it's a program where, it, and you guys will probably have heard of it, uh, where you know empowering women to try and uh, get them get more women um, into media sport. Um, mm. And she has a, you know, she she also speaks of trying to get more um, Pacifica Maori women in that space as well. So um, we talked one day, and um, you know, I can. I'd like to think I can read a game of rugby. So, you know, you think it's kind of that easy, you know, you, you work in it, you, you love it and you, you know, you're watching it at home. It's not that easy by the way, <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, it was an opportunity, um, very uncomfortable. Um, and I'm still learning, you know, constantly still learning. Um, so, I've, you know, I've been fortunate enough to commentate um, for Sky and in doing so, um, I commentate the Farah Palmer Cup games, and um, some had just gone. I was able to um, commentate the National Sevens, which was, um, wow. yeah, that was, a, oh my goodness. You know, because it's live at sevens, you've got to keep going in the next games. It's not like uh, 15s where there's breaks, and then you can sort of, you know, think about, okay, this is the next play. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but... It's pretty awesome. It's awesome. And I think in commentary, you and Ken Laban will say this, if you don't come prepared, you might as well go home, you know, so you've, you've got to come prepared, know who you're talking about, you know, um, research who they've played against and all that sort of stuff. So profiling is really important. Mm -hmm. But I think my coaching has really helped with that and um, coaching processes. So that's that's how I got into it. Uh, Melody Robertson, probably a little bit of a nudge there. That's, um, that's awesome for our our young girls, our young Pacifica girls, to, to see you up there, you know, doing what doesn't really come natural to us. I mean, actually commentating a, a sport and seeing a brown face up there that they can relate to. They're like, oh, okay, well, if Vanya can do it, why can't I? You know, it's pretty cool. I keep saying this to myself, that, um, um, you know, these opportunities don't come around every day, you know, mm -hmm. and, and also it's when I get over myself and I've got to, I've got to keep telling that, saying that to myself is um it's not about you it's 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 a bigger picture you know you're standing in the gap for um our people or, or for girls today because if you can't you know that that um what we live by at the moment or not live by but especially in the women's game if you can't you can't be it if you can't see it so you know i don't take that uh it's that's a huge responsibility for me and so i don't take it very lightly with um, Vani, just in saying that as well, what was it like going to, you went to the States and were part of the ESPNW program? What was that, yeah. what was that like? Um, so that was in October, November last year. So it was the Global Sports Mentoring Program. Yeah. Um, one, it was wicked. So um, it was ESPNW as well as um, the USA Sports Diplomacy uh, Department and uh, the University of Tennessee. So the program uh, was six weeks um, in America. The, there were 16 women. Um, I was selected as part of that, that cohort, um, and we're from 14 different countries. Um, so we're talking uh, Lithuania, Bolivia, Brazil, um, just to name a few. Um, and they, they bring us in, and it really is about... Uh, they, they bought... We were... We're selected on our, uh, we're all in some sort of um, role in sport. So we had journalists and um, what else did we, I mean, then we had, you know, we had a few athletes out there. Uh, so we had a, a vast range of people, but the common thing that brought us together was sport and, and I suppose our influence. Um, I was selected on um, our Pacifica Aotearoa Cup. So that was the lens and the reason why um, well, that was part of the application. I, I didn't realize the nomination had been put forward, but um, it was it was great. I what they were what the program is about is about empowering um, uh, women and, and being able to come home and, and 
provide or deliver a program that will do the same here. Um, so they had mentored or paired me with um, uh, USTA, so it's United States Tennis Association. Um, and my mentor uh, was Stacey Allister, as well as Megan Rose. Um, and so that was in um, Orlando, Florida. So we started in Washington, D.C. We had a whole heap of, uh, yeah, it was once in a lifetime opportunity, really. And actually, before this Zoom call, I was just on another call with um, a lady by the name of Sylvia. Now, she was on the, I think, I believe she was on the 2016 cohort, and she's from Macedonia. Knows, so, so she wants to, she wants to start a, um, a rugby club, or she wants to start women's rugby in Macedonia. I didn't even know where that was, the, the whole country, but um, I mean, that program has started in 2012, um, and Melody Robinson's program, The Wonderful Group, is the program that has come out of her experience um, at UST, I mean, sorry, at GSPM, so yeah, I guess I'm a, I'm a product of the product of the program, so. Wow, that's awesome. A young lady from Onihanga High? via Maris Rugby Club, all the way over there of ESPN. What a story. <laughs> incredible, yeah. incredible. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I, I'm, I am, I'm really looking forward to um, connecting with the team again. And really different though, eh, because COVID has impacted the whole of the world. Um, we're all at a standstill, but it, I mean, it hasn't stopped the drive of some of our girls, so. The... Um, Pacifica Aotearoa Cup. Tell us a little bit about that. That's um, a really run, well-run competition, as well as very well-supported. Uh, I was there last year taking photos for you, actually, and the amount of talent on display out there was uh, it was phenomenal. And the games were tough, man, really tough. Mm. Me and my wife were quite taken back at, at the physicality of them. Just, just give us a little bit of background in regards yeah. to your uh, input into that. Okay. Sure. So um, in, in my current role with New Zealand Rugby, um, it really was an area that I thought, um, you know, I knew well, so in terms of Pacifica. So the, the real drive around that was um, trying to create opportunity, playing opportunities for girls, you know, female, anyone. So um, when, you, when you're given a blank canvas, but you give it to this space, you know where you're going to go. You're going to go to your villages. You're going to go to your families and that who, mm. you know, who know. So, so and, and, and I, I guess in women's rugby at the moment, um, there's, there's club rugby, you know, on the, when I'm talking about grassroots and, and, um, and community. And for, for some people, not just women and men, um, it's a long season. You know, it's, it, it can be in... Um, a long season but also it can be intimidating for some people to join a woman's club you know so um, you can walk in so the different and they're so um, varied too so clubs who have who are stacked with black friends and then you've got clubs who are just trying to get off the ground so they're so uh, different um, so I I thought well why don't we hit um, um, our Pasifika Māori people at this time of year because no one really one kid well there was no rugby played in the pre-season sort of time frame mm -hmm. um actually there used to be a really strong maori competition it was uh tika in that sort of march yeah do you remember february march yeah, man yeah. that was off the chain yeah. back in our day and so it was a time where you know i'm taking it back before bus speaker now um uh i used to be really jealous of that competition because we couldn't play in it you know we didn't really have anything um, until Nicholas Spekulich came along and Auckland Samoa sort of was created and then we sort of were able to uh, play in there so my thinking was well why don't we try and bring that back in a form of a festival and where people can really engage with their cultures um, and be really well supported by families because you know if your daughter's playing or if you're you know, if your mum's playing, everyone's down there in the family. They bring food that can feed everyone from here to, yeah. And then, and you know, and so that sort of, that was the flavour we we're after um, in 2013. That's where it kicked off. Um, and, and you know the Bobbies are going to come because that's where we came from. You know, that was our roots and, and we knew that it would work. So we started with four teams um, and it was uh, the Auckland, Auckland Samoa, Auckland Tonga, 
we had a Cook Island team and we based them out around South Auckland counties and then we had a, um, the Maldives team from counties. So we started with four. The following year we added an under 18s uh, age grade. Um, it just took off mm -hmm. and we decided that we were going to host it at different regions. So we went from Harbour, North Harbour to counties to Auckland, just in that sort of area, the Auckland wider region. Um, today, it's grown to not only the 15s format, it's to the sevens format. We have around 58 um, sevens teams from, uh, you know, from Ripper age group right through to uh, Open Women's. Um, and it's the same with our preseason. And we have it a preseason festival where anyone can come and check on a jersey. So it was focused at, um, you know, for our Pacifica Māori people, and it's now extended to everyone and anyone can come and put on a, a jersey. We can find a team for you, or your clubs can come and play now, or your schools can. So originally, that was the main focus. Um, but that that's the, if you, you know, Pat, you've been there. If you come down to Pacifica, there is music playing from 9 a.m. in the morning right through the end of the day. The MC is going wild himself um, and everyone's just having a real massive good time. And, and I think that's the beauty of women's rugby is that um, when you try and create an environment to invite everybody, and we know how to do that as, as Pacifica people. It's one of our first main pillars. You're welcoming. And then when you when people come, you feed everybody. It doesn't matter. That's the sort of values that we sort of planted in this, this tournament. Um, so it's the same tournament that, um, you know, that was picked up or it was part of the application for this Global Sports Mentoring Program. It also was used... Um, uh, that World Rugby to present, I think it was the World Cup at the time, 2010, and it was presented to, um, they had a World Rugby conference and around um, a way that they could use rugby if you're just at a starting point. And so that was, you know, back then, if you look at how far Packers come now, it's, it's grown pretty massively. And I can hand on heart say that if I was to walk away tomorrow, the community would run that tournament easily. So. Um, I feel that it's sustainable and um, and it's you know uh, a game for all. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's it's great to see that we the, our ladies have that tournament that they can play in. I guess when we're looking at sort of other opportunities or pathways for our female our, our female players, I mean when you look at say professional women's rugby and say the the Super W competition over in Australia, do you think you'll ever see like a uh, a Blues or a Hurricanes women's team go over maybe playing that like they do on the NRL or like the mm. ANZ Cup used to do sort of thing, championships used to do? Um, I think I think Australia um, have done a good job. So Jilly is the head of women's rugby in, um, in Australia and um, she she's created that. I think that was um, really important for the pathway uh, for Australia, but also mm. the fact that, um, you know, girls have to see that they can they can play at that sort of level. Um, and I think prior to that, they, you know, they had a week tournament where um, states would come in or states or, or clubs or, you know, our, I think it, it, that was sort of equivalent to what might attend as FPC perhaps, and they would drive in for, and they'd play that for over um, a week. That's, that's my understanding from the Kiwis that used to play there. And so I think um, when, when you look at Super W, it really is, and this is my opinion, um, equivalent to our Farah Palmer Cup at the moment. They, they need time to develop that competition, just as like um, for us, our new teams that have come into Farah Palmer Cup, they also need time to develop that. So um, I think in a couple of years' time, you will see, I mean, I think they've, they started with four teams, they've grown to five, um, and good things take time. You know, I, I know in the professional high-performance realm, uh, for a coach to really grow, um, Four or five years is what they say. Um, so I think we, we don't do um, our coaches or we don't give them enough time to grow and, and learn about their players and all that. Um, for us, I know that there's, um, I think our Super Rugby franchises are really wanting to, to go there, um, but we don't want it to fall over. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't say never. I'd love to. We, we really do need to support um, Australia and their... And, and we do, you know, we have the O'Reilly Cup between the Black Ferns and, and that's an annual um, 
in your test matches um, because if we don't if we don't partnership and if we don't uh, see strength if we don't see growth in both of our uh, rugby programs um, they're the closest one to us you know in terms of opposition in that so we want to see them grow in that um, I'd like I'd like to see something uh, similar. I, I suppose I think you were talking about the ANZ Cup um, in terms of netball, but I'm, I'm pro women sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, period. So um, I'd love to see that happen. I think it's just a matter of time, perhaps. Um, but I, I do think we're at different growth levels at the moment, um, or in terms of development. So um, we just need to give each other space to grow and. I mean, we're growing so fast, so rapidly, who knows? Hey. I guess as well, at the same time, in New Zealand, there are sort of limited spaces, limited spots for play and coaching. Um, what are your thoughts on, on players of getting over, overseas and coaching or even playing? I mean, you mentioned Bella, Anna Richards. Mm -hmm. I remember them when they were in Hong Kong and the amazing impact they had on that union. But I mean, you know, if, if someone's coming to the end of their time or even during their playing time, would you encourage girls to get a woman get overseas and play a bit of rugby if it's available and, and it works for them? I'd absolutely encourage girls if they're coming to the end of their career to to start picking up a um, a whistle or, or picking up a coach's you know book because um, uh, I think oh actually the World Rugby have just launched overnight f um, for us a a tool I think it's called a, a woman coaching rugby tool book wow. uh, and that's the first of its kind you know like well from from World Rugby anyway um, really really encouraging it actually features Bella Milo uh, from Hong Kong so you know she's um, a current Manusina and also a captain um, but she's also uh, she also works for Hong Kong um, it also features Tiffany Fai who's the former USA um, captain um, yeah I mean it, it's so I think I was just so encouraged because there were there were pictures of people that relate to me or or that look like me <laughs> um and that I you know and actually know um Dawn Patelisio, who's also a former um not only a former Wellington Pride player but she's also a former Manusina player so you've got three pretty staunch oh. uh Samoan girls that feature in this tool book that have they've come up and they're used as examples to showcase hey look these are players who are currently in the game coaching um, so there is a big drive uh, I know rugby we, we are short in coaches full stop you know in the men's game and the boys game so um, if we globally are hitting the 25% mark in terms of players female players you know damn straight we need to you know, fill the spaces and all the other different levels, coaches, referees, governance, all, you know, committees. That's the sort of drive that we really need in our spaces as well as we're, uh, women's sport in general. So um, if, in saying that, it is really hard to get coaching opportunities in New Zealand, mm, not yeah. only in the women's space, but also in the men's space. So we have found that some of our coaches are finding those opportunities overseas because, we're New Zealand, so uh, the world are relish. You know, they would love to take up. Um, so that's what's currently happening at the moment. We do have a few programs um, in place in terms of New Zealand rugby. So we have a small cohort of high performance female coaches, and that is taken care of from our um, our high performance team. And then we have another tier under that who is. So you know, we you know we we are we are putting things in place for our coaches, but as we all know. Um, a lot of these opportunities are very hard to get by, especially in New Zealand where, you know, rugby is our national game. So I guess with the recent re-election of, old, um, of Bill Beaumont, he talk, like he campaigned a lot on talking about how he's, they're, they're helping to increase women's rugby and, and get it up there. Um, mm. What are your thoughts on sort of what he's done in his first term and how can he sort of improve in, in his next term, I guess? Yeah, um, you know, obviously he's been re-elected or reappointed um what i've been impressed with the most is that uh, we have um katie sedlia who's the general manager of women's rugby at, at world rugby um so you know obviously based in dublin and that's under his watch so um you know i believe that because they're invested in katie sedlia that that we and I've just talked about this, you know, this this book that's all this toolbox that has just been launched. Um, she's a Kiwi. 
and mm -hmm. and she's doing great things. So um, with the World Cup that's being held here next year, yes. I'm going to say it, it's going to it's going to happen. <laughs> um, hopefully, uh, with Jacinda Ardern's announcement of you know um, the possibility of us heading into level two, it seems more promising than ever. Um, yeah, so I know I've taken a spin on the women's side. It's it's really is about trying to um, get that international window aligned. So um, I think World Rugby has done great in that regard. Um, and I and I also know that the Oceania with Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, uh, Papua New Guinea. Now they've had um, annual matches in Fiji for the last two years. Um, and that's part of the World Rugby, um, uh, I, I guess, investment as well. So for me, that's really encouraging to see. Um, I'd, I'd probably, yeah, the, the, with the World Rugby happening next year, Fiji, New Zealand, Australia are the three from Pacifica that, you know, from Oceania that are going through to the World Cup. Um, I'd really love to see another Pacifica team in there. So here's hoping. So. You know, I've, I know I've gone a, a roundabout way, but um, you know, I, I, I'm encouraged that <laughs> triple toe. I'm encouraged that there's a, a role there. It, it gives me, um, I guess, faith that uh, other countries are following suit and that they are investing in the countries that that uh, that do have women's programs and don't have women's programs. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you're in involved with there, Vanya. That's <laughs> that's uh, incredible. That um, there there is more that. Um, that we'd like to discuss Vanya, but because of time restraints and we've got to get our beauty sleep, especially me and Jack. But um, I just want to, um, I just want to say, you know, thank you very much for coming on to our podcast. Um, um, the programs you're running and the opportunities that you have given my daughters from a personal point of view has been incredible. Um, you know, the teenage tour program that you ran last year, um, absolutely amazing. It, it gave my, gave my daughter a lot of confidence and, and she was around uh, her people you know, and she was learning about her culture. Uh, that was really uh, an amazing program and I hopefully that, that continues. Um, also the, the Auckland Samoa Rugby. You took my, uh, my second eldest, eldest uh, Letiara, on that trip with you guys to Samoa and I'm so grateful for that. My, my Leti's not the most confident or outgoing person, but man, that, that trip did us so much for her confidence, you know, for her, who she is as a person. She, she couldn't believe that she was playing alongside ex-black friends. She was being coached by ex-black friends. You know, she was, she didn't think she belonged in that environment, but yourself and Justine and DJ Skis or Skis the coach and Nick, you know, you all molded her into a, a, a person that could believe in, in, a, in something that, you know, she may never have thought of. So my, my perspective, Vani, and I'm sorry I'm going on here, but, you should never have a, a sporting person as a role model for your children. That's my personal perspective. And, and I, I say you, you need to find that within your, within your family unit. Um, my, my, my girls are, are blessed because they have strong, a strong mother. They have uh, strong grandparents. They have strong aunties, you know, Denise, the mother, Auntie Eva, uh, Auntie Mavis. Mm -hmm. you know, they're all very strong Pacific people, Pacific women in particular. But when I see people like yourself and Justine doing the stuff uh, on behalf of our community, on behalf of our people, and in particular on behalf of our girls, like you guys are giving them power and, and that's a real beautiful thing from my perspective. And you are a role model to my girls, no doubt whatsoever, and, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think, I think our communities are lucky because we have, we have a Ronnie Clark out there doing his bit, we have uh, Sir Michael, uh, doing his bit for our people, for our, for the players and for our community, and then to finish off that you know that triangle, we have yourself, and uh, I'm sure Jack, you got any comments there, mate? Oh, just uh, just like Pat, uh, you're super inspiring. Um, what you're doing to empower our people, our women, um, and the all tour that that you are undergoing right now we we appreciate it we acknowledge it and, and we just yeah continue to support it and may it long continue you know they always talk about in rugby how you're only looking after a jersey or you're holding a place for the next generation and when you've got people like yourself that are in those positions that can help the next generation come through that's that's ultimately what it's about so yeah love to love it awesome to have you
Thank you, boys. There's a, um, yeah, look, very encouraging words, um, especially when you, you know, you allow us um, the honour of, you know, taking care of your girls. It's, it's not a, you know, for a father to allow his girl to, you know, come with us overseas. And, mm -hmm. and even, even on the tenant tour program, it's, uh, and that's what I was alluding to earlier. It's not a, I carry that with with huge weight, you know. It's it's not a, and we all do. I know I speak on behalf of the Bible Bobby. So hey, look, um, thank you so much um, for allowing me to share just a little bit um, of my journey with you guys. Um, but you know, I, I think when you touched on the um, the guys and Ronnie Clark and Mock Jones, um, we're just adding to that, eh? And uh, what an appointment that we have in in Ronnie. Um, looking forward to working alongside him when we do get the chance. So, mm. you know, I expect to see him back on your podcast talking about some more fantastic stuff. Um, so thank you, team. Thank you very much. Gay Lover. I'm trying to get Beatrice on as well. Beatrice Farmwina, another yes. strong Pacific lady. But um, mm. been a pleasure and an honour. And uh, it's great to get a, a woman's perspective on not only rugby, but also our Pacifica uh, TNA tour. You know, it's um, it's been awesome. So. Thank you so much. Um, as I okay. always sign off, uh, all love, no hate, fala here. Oh. My wife deplores the fact that women are playing rugby. I played the game as a man. I know it's a hard game for women to play. Something was not right about these delicate, blushing girls playing rugby. A legitimate tackle will end up being a, a bit of a scrap pulling you to hairs. I didn't think rugby was a sport for women. I tolerate it, but I don't think it's a game for women, really. Some games suit women better than others. Today, the game of rugby is more popular than ever. Played in 121 countries. In 2019, it's the largest sporting event in the world. But while rugby is global, it's not universal. Yet. You give everything physically of yourself in rugby, and so you just, you have to love it threw me a ball and I ran through people and that was it. It gave me as a woman freedom. It made me feel free. Once exclusively played by rich, white English schoolboys, rugby is now an international sport for men and women everywhere. From its Dublin headquarters, rugby is driven by a big, hairy, audacious goal to be the game of as many people as possible. <laughs> 